So, Motor Trend was wrong. The C8 Stingray does not have 650 horsepower. You know how I know that? It's science. All right, so first of all, I have to say, I'm, I'm not a scientist, I'm not an engineer, I'm not, not any of those things. I'm not, a, I'm not even a mechanic. <laughs> so um, take that for what it's worth. But I, I do have a decent amount of common sense. And I know that if the 2019 Stingray has a 6.2 pushrod V8, the 2020 Stingray has a 6.2 liter pushrod V8. For the most part, the architecture of the engines are the same. There's a few minor tweaks, but how in the world do they explain getting 150, 175 or so more horsepower out of this new car? And, and they just publish a story doing that. So which of these numbers is true? The 495 that Chevrolet is claiming or the 650 that we saw? I'm leaning more towards the 650 that we saw. You remember a few days ago, I did publish a video explaining my take on the initial report of this uh, 650 horsepower. And at the time I could not help but wonder how it seemed wrong. And so I had to do some research. I found some people much smarter than me to uh, figure out that this isn't right. So um, I, did, I did whatever research I could on the worldwide interwebs. And I think I've found how I am correct by saying it doesn't have 650 horsepower. And here's how I know that. And of course, since I'm not an engineer, there are some things uh, that I, I may not be able to perfectly explain, but I do know back to my high school physics class, I do remember that horsepower is a mathematical equation. It's, it's torque times RPM. That's, that's what horsepower is. It's not some uh, just magical number that this dyno machine spits out. It actually is an actual measurement that's, that's math. If torque remains constant, speed and horsepower are proportional. As the speed, or RPM, increases, horsepower increases to maintain constant torque. So since we know it's a mathematical number, uh, we can then figure out, well, what does it mean to find torque? Well, you know, there are, there are mathematical maximums in how to figure out torque, too. Again, I'm not going to get into the science of it, but, you know, if, if the displacement of an engine is only so much, it can only do so much with the compression ratios and things like that. That's why I can't help but understand how they expect us to believe that a 6.2 liter V8 that was one year apart from a 6.2 liter V8 that, you know, barely made 400 or so horsepower at the wheels is somehow making 515, which then translates back to about 650 uh, if you count for the drivetrain loss. Um, it, it just doesn't quite make sense. See, there's this pesky measurement called brake mean effective pressure, and that can only do so much. And, and let's tell you have forced induction, you can't go above a certain level. And that's why there's only so much torque you can get out of this style of V8 at this displacement without forced induction. You can just make the engine bigger, right? If you go from two liters to 2.5, you'd expect to get 25% more performance with all other things being equal. So that's kind of an easy win. Adding a turbo is a bit like that too, because it artificially pumps up the volume by jamming more air volume in. Or the second fudge here, even easier, you can just spin the engine faster, right? And now that brake mean effective pressure is actually something measured by the SAE when they do the testing of these engines. And they tested the engine at 12.9. Uh, but if you do the math, Motor Trends is testing theirs at over 17. And that's just simply not mathematically possible uh, unless you got some sort of forced induction or something like that. So um, clearly there's, there's numbers wrong here. And we've got to figure out how they screwed it up. That's one thing, which I have a theory. Uh, and then we next have to figure out why in the world would they publish something that is wrong? This is 
more or less the leading publication for automobile news in the world, or at least in the United States, and they're publishing this story so early, so wrong, and they are gonna get called out on it. I'm surprised no one else has. I'm surprised there's more people that are writing about it, posting about it all over the internet saying, 650 horsepower, this is amazing, this is a beast, this is blah, 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 when it's just not right. And I think there's other magazines and other websites and other people that will do their testing of the car, get completely different results, and they will expose Motor Trend. Um, so, to you guys at Motor Trend, why'd you do this? There's a lot of other things you could have done. You could have gone and to another dyno if you realize maybe this dyno is wrong. I know you tested a Dodge Cummins, uh, but I don't know if that's the right control measure. Why wouldn't you take the same car to a different dyno? Or why wouldn't you take a, an LT1 engine from a, from a C7 and put a C7 on the same dyno you just put that one on, assuming the engine's the same, and see if you come up with a different result? There's a lot of other measurements out there also that, that throw up the, the, the red flag for BS. You know, one of them is there, there is mathematically a way to determine how fast a car should go in the quarter mile, what the trap speed should be, what the top speed should be uh, if you're good enough to understand drag coefficients and those things. I'm gonna be doing this for a Bugatti Veyron Supersport. Great, so let's plug in those values that we had on the previous whiteboard and solve for velocity. Uh, all of those tests, if you do the math, which other people have, are saying that this is wrong. Um, so how, how did they get this wrong? Why, why would they publish this? First of all, I think they published it because they wanted to be the first to do it. They're making a big splash. Notice all the people talking about, all the YouTubers putting up videos, all the people on the internet, Instagram, all the other uh, different web outlets out there talking about this and posting articles about it. It's being talked about and it's putting Motor Trend out in the forefront. Not too many people though are putting pen to the paper to figure out that this is just wrong. I don't know how to put the pen to paper. I do know the common sense behind it. And there's not just a way where a magically the exact same type of engine can magically just manufacture an extra 150 to 175 horsepower. It's just not how the science works. Sorry. So then how did they get this wrong? Well, I read the article that Motor Trend posted. I watched the video and you know, I think they really got it wrong because of the way that they configured the dyno. First of all, it's a Mustang dyno. Um, I'm not a dyno expert, but I do know there's a lot of people that don't have the greatest opinions of Mustang dynos. Um, and I think this might hurt that, that reputation of Mustang dyno even more. Um, but the important thing that they, had, they explained in this article was the inputs of the gear ratios. And they they said that they put it in fifth gear first and tested it and they got a crazy result. So they put it in sixth gear, tested it, got a more realistic result, but still a crazy result. And so they went and did some, some thinking and testing and verification of different things. And, and they came up with the resolution that, well, fifth gear actually is the right gear because it's the closest to the one-to-one -one ratio and so it must be right it just magically must be right because my one dyno run i know they did six runs but my one dyno test uh with the one closest to one-to-one -one ratio we could get manufactured a 650 crank horsepower number it must be right it's not it's wrong motor trend what are you doing so here we are, what do we do next? Well, uh, notice how a lot of these other magazine outlets had a car, no one else tested it on a dyno and posted about it. And they might have tested it, they just didn't write about it. And I think this is part of the reason, maybe they got similar results, they knew it was wrong, and so they did the safe thing and did not post it until they had more accurate results. I think we're gonna see Car and Driver and some internet magazines uh, call out Motor Trend. I think we are. I think we're going to see more people uh, make videos like like this one that you're watching that maybe call out Motor Trend. Hopefully some you know smarter folks than me. I've gone through all this discussion about why this is wrong, but at the end of the day, does it really matter for the car? It's not going to magically make the car go slower if 
the horsepower is wrong. I think what it does is it's just going to end up hurting the reputation of Motor Trend. And it might help the, hurt the reputation of GM a little bit. Uh, but they're not the ones coming out saying that it's 650 horsepower. Only Motor Trend is doing that. Uh, GM is publishing the SAE certified numbers at 495. Um, so does this change the fact that I want to get one of these cars? Not at all. Should it change your opinion of it? No. No, it should not. The car the car's not going to go slower because it has 495 versus 650 theoretical horsepower. The car is going to go just as fast, going to perform just as well. That doesn't matter. Um, but uh, it's it's going to going to put a bad look on Motor Trend and kind of the automotive journalism world a little bit uh, because of their their perceived reputation. So if you have an order uh, and all of a sudden something comes out that's saying that it's not 650 horsepower, keep your order. Uh, if you now want to go get one because we, it magically has 650 horsepower, A, don't. B, uh, don't then cancel it once they say that it's not 650 horsepower because at the end of the day, the car's still going to do 0 to 60 in 2.8. The car's still going to do a quick quarter mile. Start, the car's still going to have a great top speed. It's going to be great around the racetrack. It's going to have a little bit of understeer, apparently, but it's still going to be a fantastic car. Um, this number that is wrong by one publication shouldn't change your mind about whether or not you want to get a car. Um, but it's just a bummer that it happened. That's it. Anyway, I wanted to make this video just to kind of, uh, I don't know if I'm exposing Motor Trend. Uh, again, um, any anything I've put in this video, uh, it's because I got it from someone else that I did research on the internet that's much smarter than me, that, that did the math and did the charts and graphs and the nerd stuff that I, I don't quite know how to do, but it did not pass the BS snip test uh, of mine. And that's why I wanted to go look into it. And that's why I wanted to make this video. Um, it doesn't necessarily contradict the video I just made a few days ago, because in that video, you remember I was saying that it just doesn't seem right. It just doesn't seem like this, this makes sense. I was trying to trust it, but in the end of my video, I, I said that, uh, you know, they should have done a few other things and, and I wish they had done a little more testings. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a like down below. Uh, I had fun out here. Just I'm just out here looking at property uh, on this ranch out here and hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed the scenery behind me. Uh, but definitely give me a subscribe, hit the little logo over in the corner uh, and give me a like down below. Uh, feel free to share this video wherever you'd like uh, and I look forward to making more. So until next time, adios.